precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Piper. I have one. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is a preparation for worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for your mercy and grace. We welcome your Holy Spirit as we worship. Amen. Amen. Good job. Mike. All right, hit it. Okay, this is Palm Sunday. Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. We hail our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hoshana in the highest is our first song. Everybody stand up if you can and sing. And just picture him coming into the town and everybody shouting and praising him. Because this is a special time. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of Palm Sunday. No, I. I oh. <laughs> Jimmy, would you please come and open us up in prayer? Good morning, church family. Everybody have a good week? Even if we had a bad week, we had a good week in the Lord, right? That's right. Will you bow your hearts in with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning for, first of all, our salvation, uh, the ability to come together and to worship the one and only true God. Lord God, we thank you for that. Lord, we lift up our pastor as he gives out the word today. Lord God, as the Holy Spirit guides him and helps him teach us and that we would take the message that we, that we get today at to heart, Lord God, that we would meditate on it and share it with others with love, Lord God. 
We thank you for the beautiful weather outside. We thank yes. you for our friends and family that could come today. And we lift those up that couldn't make it but are still watching, Lord God, at home. We just ask that as we go through our week, Lord God, that you would use us to further your kingdom, that we would stay out of ourselves and do your will today. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, Piper, you had an announcement? If you want to, you can come up here. It's a free free stage. <laughs> uh, Almost. Almost. <laughs> so I had some C's candy, and I already know who ordered it, but I have two extra candies. So if you ordered from me and I don't have, like, a bag, because I have Connie and somebody else. Me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't remember who, but I also have two other candies. So if you know if you ordered, then just let me know. <laughs> so I have two extra candies, and I don't know who's there. I did the chocolate eggs. We're going to know where to go after chocolate church. Chocolate eggs. Yeah. That's me. Um, All right, come on, Bible. I'll have it now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> So I would like to announce this morning because um, I know, and I'll, I'm not going to, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Barbara and Ross take care of that area, but um, we want to, we're updating the directory, but I'll let you, I'll let them tell you more about that. But in doing so, uh, we are, want to inform you about church membership and we want to invite church membership. Uh, church membership is... The requirements are that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and that you have been baptized, which means fully immersed. We have a baptismal pool here in the back behind all of this equipment. <laughs> uh, there is a nice sized baptismal pool, so fully immersion baptismal pool. And we understand if there is physical difficulties that you can't be immersed, that's fine. Uh, we, we, Totally understand about that, but that is the requirements for becoming a member. And of course, daily attendance uh, is required. So if you're interested in becoming a member of our church. Weekly. Weekly. <laughs> daily? Daily would be nice. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, not daily. Weekly. I'm sorry. We have something almost every day. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why I said daily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we do. We have Wednesday night Bible study. We have Friday night. Well, there's... We have Sunday morning, if you're able to get up early in the morning. We have Sunday morning Bible study at 9.30 uh, with Warren. And then we have Wednesday night. Uh, and I do want you to keep Pastor Glenn in prayer. Uh, his eyes, he's suffering from, uh, his eyes have gotten really bad, so he won't be teaching. So I will be conducting the Wednesday night Bible study. And I'm not going to pick up pick up where he left off, and so uh, we're going to be beginning a new study, and I think we're going to lean toward the gospel in the stars. So talking about the the gospel in the stars, and it's called the Zodorek or the Masoreth. So it has a lot of scripture involved regarding how back in Adam and Seth and um, all their days before there was a written word, the gospel was written in the stars of the coming Messiah. So we'll be learning that on Wednesdays. On Friday, we will be celebrating Passover. And for those of you who don't Seder, we'll be celebrating Passover, which is um, the, the night that God passed over all the ones that put the blood on the door over their... Um, in Egypt, when they were leaving Egypt. You know, a supervisor had asked me what Passover was. He didn't know what Passover was. I says, well, for the Israelites, it was their deliverance from Egypt when they put the blood over their doorpost. And for us, it is the blood of Jesus Christ over the doorpost of our hearts Amen. that frees us from eternal death and we have eternal life. So that's our celebration of that. So both, both, both Bible studies, Wednesday and Friday at 7 o'clock, Please come a little early, uh, come hungry, because we do have food, and you will get fed, and you will get fed spiritually. <laughs> All right. Uh, amen, amen. Yvette, would you like to? Okay. Because I know Yvette has. Oh, for Easter. Yeah. And then I'll. Well, yeah.
Good morning, everybody. I just want to announce again um, that we will be having our Easter dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it, um, this Tuesday. And we will start, instead of at 11.30, we'll start at 11 with our devotional. It's always a good message. Then at 12 to 2, we will be doing our lunch. I ask one and all to come. This is really the time that we should share with somebody we usually wouldn't share with. It is a good way of fellowship. It's a good way to outreach the people that we really need to get in touch with. Thank you. I was really intimidated by Ross when I first met him in this church because he sits in the back there with the sunglasses on looking all grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> Ross has agreed to volunteer to help me um, update the church directory, which we have not done in, I think, three years. So um, I'm going to have him talk a little bit about it. Um, if you have not, if you're fairly new to the church in the last COVID, two COVID years and you've not filled out a visitor's card, please do so so we can get you at least on our roster um, with your phone number where we can contact you. And there are also... Um, applications in the forum for church membership if you would like to um, take that extra step and apply to become a member. Um, okay, take it away. It's all yours. Grouchy. I'm, I'm not going to say all. <laughs> Grumpy. Grumpy. Yeah, Grumpy. Grumpy. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to say a whole lot. There, there's some cards out here. There's some in the foyer, and I'll have some on the clipboard here. If you've never belong to the church or never been in the directory and you want to fill out for your family all the info. And I'm also going to send down the last directory that went around in 2020. And if you want to do edits, I know everybody's email and phone numbers changed quite often. So I'll start it here, just pass it around. We'll do it like three or four weeks. Yep. To, yep. So, we so everybody, everybody gets a chance. Yep. Yeah. So you'll be, you'll be doing this every week for a while. Well, but, the yeah. ones that did it. Now. Right. That's all I okay. had to say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Let's have let's have our shofar blowers come on up. Thank you, Levi. Oh wait 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 wait. Sorry. One more. Oh. And the council. Sorry about that. Council meeting t uh, Monday night at 6 p.m. We will be having our council meeting. And men and women's breakfast. The women will meet here this coming up Saturday, 9:30 in the fellowship hall. And the men will meet at Abby's at 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> birthday. Oh wait, we're gonna so far. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's have Millie, Veronica, and Leonette come on up for the birthdays. How many? Three. And anybody else that has a birthday coming up? Oh, you're I'm, tomorrow? I'm today. Oh. See, this is the reason why we're passing around the new uh, directory because I don't I don't have everybody's birthday, so we need to update it. It's been it's been two years. So. <laughs> Let me move. <laughs> you have any cards for that happy birthday? It's yours too? I don't know. Last week.
each one of you. <laughs> okay. Now can we have the shofar blowers? <laughs> Official now. Official. All right. Now, can we please have the gentlemen or ladies who are going to please help with the offering coming up? Father in heaven, I want to ask you to forgive us our sins, that we can thank you for this day, for all that you provide for us, and Father, that for the opportunity to give back what you give to us in the first place, because none of it's ours, it's all yours, and so we thank you for the opportunity to give back what we can, and ask you to bless it for the, our king, your kingdom. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
there's something in between. It's like a navy. I can hardly do it. I'm turning this way. I'm like, I can You get all killed. And I don't know how loud I am. I'm just going to eat it. I'm loud. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You guys ready? All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and Newport, <laughs> please come and offer a prayer for the sick and needy. Man, that was a lot of kids, wasn't it? Isn't that beautiful? They just beautiful smiles, beautiful children. And, and then there's some of um, some of God's other children that aren't here today because they're feeling a little bit puny. But um, all the things that I believe in tell me that they should be here feeling unpuny. And, um, and I really believe that. 
God's promises power every part of my life, the good days, the bad days, the good ways, the wrong ways. He is my everything. And we got to let him know that the light that shines from within us is his light. It's shining bright enough. No, man, there's so much of his love to go around. Let's make sure it gets to those that we love, that they, they can join us here. Let's bow our hearts and pray to our Lord for our friends and loved ones. Lord, so much of everything that we do, in fact, everything that we do is you. And um, our love of your promises for our friends that aren't here today, those that are broken, those that are hurt, those in sorrow, let's cheer them up, lift them up, and get them back here. Let those that we meet see your light shining within us and let them know that that's you. Let them know that what we say and what we do comes from you. Let's encourage them enough with our sunshine to know that it's your sunshine. Thank you so much that when we reach out to those that we love that we can use your hands. We can let them feel your love. We can let them feel your touch that we are guided by you and guided into those of need. And thank you so much for using us as your tools of love. In Jesus' name, we pray for those that we do love and they, those that we do miss. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. I was asked to give a special prayer for Paul, who was in the hospital, yes. Sherry's husband. Um, if you want to come up and we'll pray with you. Um, LaShawn, why don't you come up? She's going to stand in place for her brother-in-law. Her brother-in-law is in the hospital right now, and so he's been really bad. So Heavenly Father, we just come, boldly come to your throne, Lord, with grace, Lord. We come being obedient, Lord. And using the gift that you've given us, Lord, of love and in prayer. Lord, we just want to lift up to you, Paul, right now, Lord, as Sherry stands in his place, Lord, and just asking, Lord, you know, Lord, exactly what is going on with him. And we just pray, Lord, that you take him into your hands, Lord. And we ask for comfort right now with the time of the family, Lord, and peace, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you would bless these physicians, Lord, with your wisdom, with your knowledge, with your instruction, Lord. And we pray, Lord, and we ask that your will be done, Lord, right now, Lord. We know the, the, the hurt and pain that it's involved, Lord, when a loved one is sick and going through, Lord, what, what most people, Lord, just cannot bear, Lord. But we just pray for strength right now in this moment, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you move in a mighty way, Lord, that we may Amen. praise your name. In the precious Amen. name of Yahweh HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ. Amen. 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 All right. For those that can stand, stand. For those that want to sit, sit. Let's praise the Lord. This is Palm Sunday, and like I said, Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. And they said, if the people don't praise, the rocks will cry out. So we're all rock, at Rocky Point. Come on. Be rocks and sing and shout to the Lord. This is like a chant. So I'll sing it, and then you sing with the girls. Chant back. We want everybody praising the Lord.
Okay, this is the kind of same thing. We're chanting to the Lord. We're praising him. The rocks are crying out because he is the Lord of all. Amen.
God. 
Aleluia. like I was congratulating the baseball team. <laughs> All right. Well. Good morning once again, everyone. Well, I got bad news, I got good news, and then I got bad news, and then I got good news. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I got the good, good news. <laughs> well, before we turn into our Bibles, uh, we're going to be reading out of the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. I read this story yesterday, and it reminded me to keep that, that God is the center of why we're doing things. It's not about us. It's about him. It's a story about a little donkey. It says, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, all the townspeople honored him, honored him by fanning him with green palm leaves and throwing flowers from their houses. They cried hallelujah and worshiped him with all their hearts. Seeing all this worship, the donkey who carried Jesus 
felt extremely proud and started to bray. Finally, you all recognize my true glory. I always knew that the people of Jerusalem are intelligent enough, said the donkey. <laughs> Jesus, on the other hand, thought, it is not me that the people worship. It is the mercy of the Lord that has been bestowed upon me and that I carry, which they found wonderful. This is a little story from Shananda Swami. And the moral of the story is we all carry gifts. We all carry gifts, but it's for the Lord's glory. Amen. Bow your hearts with me. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day and we thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. And we just praise you this morning, Lord, and we just pray that you would open up our hearts and open up our minds to receive your word, Lord. And we welcome your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, to open up our hearts, open up our minds to receive your word and to be able to apply it to our lives as well as help others apply it to their lives, Lord. Bless us, Lord, to be good servants, to be good stewards, Lord, and carry out your message, the message of salvation, Lord, and help us to be diligent in seeking and knowing more of you. We ask this all in the precious name of Yavashua HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ. Amen. So, I just want to let you know a little bit about, there's two plots before I start reading. The Pharisees had a plot to kill Jesus because his fame spread throughout the land and many began following him and it was not good for the Pharisees. They had a prideful hearts. They wanted full control of the people and the nation. So he was kind of on the run, you know. And not only him, but Lazarus as well. There were many Jews who believed in Jesus and the things he did, but also they told the Pharisees everything that Jesus did. They were filled in in all the details the chief priests, Pharisees, and council gathered and said, If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. Caiaphas, who was high priest at the time, said, You don't know what you're talking about. You don't realize that it is better for you that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. This guy Caiaphas didn't say it on his own account. He was the high priest and he was led to prophesy. He was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for the entire nation and not only for the nation, but to bring together and unite all the children of God scattered all around the world. Unknowingly, he prophesied what Jesus' purpose was in trying to execute Jesus. God works in mysterious ways. Now we get to the plot about killing Lazarus. Boy, what a testimony to have to have someone come back from the dead and be a witness. You know what that's like, right? <laughs> Lazarus was raised from the dead. He was dead once, but Jesus raised him to life. And he was dangerous to the Pharisees. He was dangerous to the kingdom of Satan. He was a living witness of what the, the power of Christ is. And he was walking with Jesus. He was a walking testimony. So they plotted to kill him. The Pharisees says, we cannot have a walking testimony. How many of us are walking testimonies? 
Yep. You're deadly to the kingdom of Satan because you're a walking, living testimony. Let's read in John chapter 12, starting in verse 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hoshana, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found the young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of, the tomb, out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. We see the multitude of people straining to see the priestly procession that was moving slowly through this massive crowd of pilgrims. Jewish people in their finest clothes had filled the roadsides from Bethany to the gates of the temple itself. Ethiopians, Greeks, Romans, and Jews all dressed in their colorful clothes. Each carried a lula of palm branch that was to be waved before the altar during the feast. The excited people shouted with the chant, Hoshana, Hoshana, save now, O Lord. O Lord, send now prosperity. And it was followed by Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Along with, God is the Lord and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with the cords to the horn of the altar. A direct quote from Psalm 118 verses 25 through 27. God does nothing by chance. Everything he does is for a purpose, and he does things on purpose. And Jesus fulfills prophecy purposely. Earlier during Jesus' ministry, they tried to take him and present him as a king, and he refused. John 6, 15 says, When Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. But on this special day, it was an appointed time. On this special day, he not only permits it, but he arranged it. He sends the disciples to get the coal and fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, a fowl of a donkey. And Jesus was doing it on the precise day that Gabriel had prophesied in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. To the T, Gabriel prophesied this to Daniel five centuries earlier. Luke 19.39 says, Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Twice with anger are these Pharisees. Twice with anger. 
We got to think about that. When you read that, that should stop and question you. What is it that irritates them so much? Why are they irritated? That's a call to us to start searching the scripture. Verse 40 of Luke 19 says, But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Right? When Pastor George married us, he gave us this stone from Jerusalem. This is one of the stones that did not cry out. It kept silent. Because the crowd shouted out, Hoshana, save now. They had been waiting for the Messiah. The people were ready, but the religious leaders were not. They wanted it their way, or no way at all. All creation, Jesus Christ was the one that created everything through his word. And all creation, he knew that all creation would cry out. You see, it wasn't only the people when Adam and Eve sinned that were cursed. It was also the ground that was cursed. And all the creation waits. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And creation knows that. So when he said, I will, even if my disciples and the crowds do not cry out, creation will cry out. Romans 8.22 says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. All the creation groans just like you do, just like I do. I desire to be in my glorified body. But until then, today I will praise the Lord. Romans 8, 23 says, Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. You were born a child of Christ, a child of God. You were born through Christ as a child of God, but your adoption happens when you mature. That's the way it was in ancient times. You were born into a family, but you did not receive your adoption until you reached full maturity. Let's get back to these religious leaders, the teachers of the law, the ones who should be knowing Scripture. Of course, all people should be knowing Scripture, but there's accountability. When God is asking you to search the scriptures, when God is asking you, get to know me through my word. Get to know me. Read your word. Be informed. It will help you. It will be strength to your bones, health to your body. We're going to go ahead and read from Luke 19, starting in verse 41. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. As all these people were cheering on, Hoshana, save now. They wanted redemption. They wanted to be saved then and now. But they were not prepared. They were not ready yet. Hoshana. As the people were crying out and celebrating, Jesus was weeping. Weeping for the city. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this day, that the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And we wonder why Israel is blinded to the Messiah. Here's your answer. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you, 
and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave you in one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. How many of us know the time of Christ's second coming? Soon? 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 Well, you're going to learn that we have the same command to know Daniel chapter 9, so you'll know when the second coming is coming. We know he's coming soon for those that are going to be raptured, but there's going to be a second coming when he will be king of kings and lord of lords to establish the millennium and have reign here on earth. Amen? Amen. We're going to go to Romans 11.25. Romans 11.25 says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery. This is a mystery to most believers. They often ask the question, Why is Israel do not believe in the Messiah? Here's your answer. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery, of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. Don't have your own opinion about them. They're your brothers and sisters in Christ too. That blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. When Jesus Christ told his disciples and those that believed in him when he rose from the dead and believed in Christ, he said, go out into the nation, go out to all the nations, to the ends of the earth, and spread the good news. And certain scripture says to every creature, every creature meaning all creation, spread the good news that he's coming back. After the Gentiles are all gathered. So that's our purpose. Gentile is anybody non-Jew, just so you know. That is our purpose, to spread the good news. Thirty years, 38 years later, after this triumphal entry in AD 70 Titus Vaspian had the 5th, 10th and 12th and 15th Roman legions lay siege to Jerusalem 38 years to the precise length of the wilderness wanderings you can find that in Deuteronomy 14 in 143 days, 600,000 Jews were killed. Historians estimate that 1.5 million men and women and children died from the siege and the famine and disease that followed. Luke 19.44 says, And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Had they heeded God's word? Who knows? Things might have turned out different. We might not have had this part of the New Testament. Who knows? Jesus held them accountable to know Daniel chapter 9. I want you to take in consideration when the disciples were asking about Jesus, about when the end times will be. They asked him. Because the first time that the temple was destroyed was during their time. We're going to read in Matthew 24. The theme of Matthew 24, I know people say that it's the end times, but the theme is be ready so you don't have to get ready. It's just to be informed. This is a parallel to Jesus telling his disciples, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Matthew 24. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these 
things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. How many of you can feel that love has grown cold these days? It's our job to warm it up. Warm it up with the fire of the Holy Spirit. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, and he adds... Whoever reads, let him understand. This is our command as well, to understand. Now, I said there would be bad news, there would be good news, there would be bad news, and some more good news. So what's the good news, Pastor Levi? The good news is, if you've given your life to Christ, this message is for you. It's not for any outsiders. It is for the children of God. It is for the army of Christ. If you have given your life to Christ, you walk. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. He will guide you through this. We have the right to praise and glorify our Lord. For he did come and we did receive him. And he will come again. He will come again. Be prepared. Be prepared. But right now we can rejoice because we do have a Lord and Savior who is sitting at the right hand of God. You know, it's amazing that God in all his power and all his glory would humble himself down and come down in the form of a man. Show us the way Give his life for us so that we would live, ascend on high, sit at the right hand of the throne, and then give us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Do you guys realize that there's a man sitting on the throne of God? A man. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he is coming back again. Hallelujah. Bow your hearts with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless you, Lord, because you are a merciful God, and you have always been merciful, Lord. We know that creation is a beautiful thing, but it's only 10% of the Bible. 90% is redemption. And Lord, we thank you because you have redeemed us. And if there is anybody here who has not given their heart to Christ... Or anybody listening on the Facebook, I pray, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I need a Savior. And I welcome you into my heart to surrender to you and yield to your Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord. And I want to live. I want new life in you. I accept you as Lord and Savior. Lead me and guide me. Show me the purpose 
that you have for my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Is our dear Pastor George used to have Praise us do stand up and hold hands across the aisle? We're the family of God. Love, love one another, oh, pray yeah. for and forgive one another, and, and do, do it swiftly. swiftly.